You know, some of you might think I'm crazy, but look what I hauled home last weekend. Not bad. Look at that. It fires right up. Go ahead and race it up a little bit. Let's see how it sounds at speed. Oh, I can hear a little bit of injection air in there. But we should be able to make it back to the shop just fine. These three cars are all 1981 300SD models. In fact, this one and that one there are late 1980 production on the tags, even though their license is 1981. And this is about a mid-1981 production 300SD over here. So I got three of them. Like when it rains here, it rains 300SDs. And to put the icing on the cake, this weekend I'm heading off to Seattle to buy another 300 SD. Now, I know some of you are thinking, hey, Kent, you know, you, you, you're getting kind of old to be doing this. <laughs> That's what my kids are saying. Hey, Dad, why are you doing this? Well, for one thing, I enjoy it. I know I can't save all these old Mercedes diesels. And I know some of you are going to say, Kent, you should save all these. Well, it's not possible. It just isn't possible, nor is it economically feasible, or is it even realistic. Now, I get this all the time. You know, I'll show an old car, and everybody says, oh, Kent. You should fix that up. You can do it. Well, um, why don't you come over and lend about 100 hours of work and maybe chip in some money? <laughs> and then we'll see how many people think that I should fix these. I've often laughed and said, well, maybe I should start a GoFundMe account to bring these three 300 SDs back to their former glory. But each one of these has a place, has a use. And now I'm going to go through each one with you and kind of show you the pros and cons of it as I decide what I'm actually going to do with these three cars. First, I'm going to start with this one. You can see right away it's got some damage in the front. That's a negative, okay? Is this one worth fixing? Let's take a closer look at the engine. So we've all decided that all three shall become drivers, and this man's going to make it happen. <laughs> Take a look at this. As soon as I opened the hood, I knew this was not a 1981 engine. So this engine's been changed. Does anyone recognize the two clues here that would indicate this engine is probably out of a 1985 model and not a 300 SD? Number one right over here, this is a high mount turbo for an 85 model with a trap oxidizer. And I'm looking at this turbo, it's a KKK turbo, so this turbo is actually pretty rare, and it's kind of interesting, the bearings are really tight on it. So this KKK turbo, <laughs> you know, has some value. But the other big clue is this SLS pump for hydraulic rear suspension. Uh, this came out of a W123 station wagon, and look at this, somebody just plugged off this pump, so I imagine when I take this pump apart, it's going to be all worn out because it probably has not been receiving lubrication. Let's take the cap off and look at the camshaft. I'm looking for camshaft scoring, which is a good indication of lack of oil changes. Now the cam lobes look real smooth, so that's okay. Uh, you can tell it's probably been 10 years since this engine ran. And I'm looking at the rear license plate and it says 2009. So. Uh, I want to start this engine up before I do anything else. You know, the engine itself may be savable. I'm not sure yet about the car. I'm going to check the fluids here, and then later on um, in the next part in this series, I'll go ahead and try to start this up, and we'll see how it runs. But let's take a look at the rest of the car. Uh, this is one feature I really, really like. Take a look at those mud guards. Aren't they cool? Uh, not. You know, it's got the chrome fender eyebrows. There's a couple other cool things on this car. Let me show you the back. Take a look at those tricked out exhaust tips. Now, if you were running behind this car and didn't have a badge on it, you probably wouldn't know it was a diesel. I doubt whether those exhaust tips are going to give it any more power. 
I often go open up the trunk on these old cars to see how much they've been loved. You know, the trunk will give you a pretty good indication whether the person that owned the car was in love with it. Let's take a look at this one. Yep, sure enough. Look at that. Rusty wheels, spare parts, a lot of leaves and junk. So the car has been sitting outside for a very long time. So the trunk uh, doesn't impress me all that much. In my humble opinion, the interior is also a good indicator as to how much the car has been loved. I'm looking at this interior and I'm thinking that no, I certainly don't want to be the one to try to save this car. You know, I've said before, you've got three major issues you're dealing with. One is the engine and the mechanical, two is the body and the paint, and three is the interior. If two out of the three of those things need major work, which in the case of this car they do, then I usually pass as far as restoring it. Now I still don't know about the engine though. The engine might be worth saving, but I really need to get the engine started and run it for a while. And you can imagine how difficult it is to try to start a car that's been sitting for 10 years with a whole bunch of old fuel in the fuel tank. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I get an engine started in these old diesels when they've been sitting for a long time.